Well, I think the most interesting casting story had to do with uh, the captain. Uh, the fans of the original series already had a somewhat jaundiced eye when it came to this new series because they felt, how can you put a new captain at the seat of the Star Trek Enterprise? I mean, that's Bill Shatner, that's Captain Kirk. And then when they heard, uh, well, l l later when they heard that it was going to be a 40-year-old uh, bald Englishman, they kind of went nuts. But uh, Gene did not like Patrick Stewart. Gene did not like the idea of a bald English guy taking over, fitting, you know, stepping into the shoes of, of William Shatner. Uh, he he aired that pretty quickly. He, now, I, sh I shouldn't say he didn't like Patrick. He acknowledged what a wonderful actor Patrick was, but he just wasn't his image of who the captain should be. And Bob Justman, who had found Patrick, who was teaching a course at UCLA in Shakespeare. He was like a visiting professor for, for a month or something like that. He introduced Patrick to, uh, to Gene, and Gene said no. And the one place where my ignorance ended up being blissful was after we had auditioned 50, 60 people for the role, and nobody was even close to Patrick. I said to Justman, we gotta push the English guy. And Justman said to me, you don't understand. Once Gene has made up his mind, he's made up his mind, it is not even worth uh, a shot at trying to change his mind. Well, I didn't know that. I, you know, when I figured everybody is, is, has the potential of changing their mind. So I started bugging Gene about the bald English guy. And he finally agreed and he said, but when we bring him to the studio for the final audition, I want him to wear a wig because I don't want this guy going in bald. So Patrick sent a uh, Sent a made a phone call, I guess, to to London, where his wig lived. And it was a very very good wig, special wig made by the one of the best theatrical wig makers in England. And he had the wig sent over, kind of FedExed over from London. And when it arrived, I remember the box arriving at my office. Uh, Patrick came in, and somebody was there to help him, and he put on the wig. And we brought him to uh, to read for John Pike at the studio. And it was Patrick and another actor, uh, an actor named Stephen Macht. Good, very, very good actor, but not in Patrick's league for this role. And they both read. And at the end, Pike said, go with the English guy, but lose the wig. And that was the best. That was the best three words we could have we could have heard. Uh, he he knew that Patrick was bald, and he had seen all the photographs of him. And we had played him a a, a tape of of Patrick's uh, you know clips of his work. Uh, and and that was the the story of casting Patrick, which I think was the most critical element of uh, of of the show. I think that was the the greatest sales point for, for the next generation. The other characters, um, Brent Spiner came in and read for the role of Data and he was a slam dunk. Um, Denise Crosby and Marina Sirtis came in and read for the roles of Tasha and the role of uh, Tasha Yar and <laughs> you get these names suddenly start slipping out of your uh, out of your head. Uh, Marina played the Kelsey character. 
of Counselor Troy. And, but they read for the roles in the opposite direction. And when we brought them to Roddenberry, he said, I like both of them, but let's have the dark-haired English one play Troy, and let's have the other one uh, play Tasha Yar, which was an interesting little thing. Uh, Gates McFadden came in and read, and she was, we knew right away she was right. Um, the two known actors, because so far of the names that I've mentioned, none of these people were known. Uh, Will Wheaton had just made this movie Stand By Me, and he was actually pretty hot at the time. Uh, and LeVar Burton was known for Roots. Uh, so they were the two kind of names uh, in, in the group. And when it came to casting the role of Worf, who was not going to be a regular character, but was going to be a recurring character, um, there was an actor named James Avery who I thought would be great for the role. But Gene wanted the, he wanted the Klingon to be very young. And of all the good actors that we read, he wanted him to be black and young. Of all the good black actors, the, the youngest one and uh, the best of the young ones was Michael Dorn who, who got that role. Uh, the role of Riker, uh, we, uh, we cast an actor named um, Billy Campbell, who later did a bunch of other good things. And Pike didn't like him. Pike didn't feel he had a, a sense of command. He wouldn't, he wouldn't follow this guy into battle, which I think was not the case. I think it was really more that he didn't audition all that well for the part. And that's when we went to our second choice, which was Jonathan Frakes, who turned out to be uh, to be a terrific choice. And Leonard Mazelish, Roddenberry's friend, had seen an actor named John Delancey do something. And he was like, everybody said, we, we don't want his creative input. But he was completely right. And Delancey came in for the pilot to play the role of Q, and he, he was just perfect. He's a wonderful actor.